So um, I am uh, first time at KubeCon. I'm also first time at the United States. And I have traveled for about uh, 18 hours to get here. So I'm both very happy and very excited. So did you ever see a pull request with a Kubernetes configuration change and had literally no idea what would this request actually do? Well, this happened to Doug and me multiple times, and this is the reason why we and you are here today. My name is Reggie. I'm an open source software tech lead at uh, Codefresh by Octopus Deploy. I'm also an Argo CD maintainer and a CNCF ambassador. A couple of words about Codefresh GitOps by Octopus Deploy. We offer Argo control plane and promotions, along with Argo enterprise support. We also offer a hardened security distro for Argo and the number one GitOps training and certifications. So let's take a look at the problem of previewing devs. Here you can see a very simple change in base, but what if, which uh, this change should affect uh, all environments, but what if one of these environments does not use this base, or what if one of the environments is using an overlay that is overriding this value? So the change to the value B happened in the pull request at the base in the config map. But the value C has overridden this in the overlay. And so the actual value will be C. The impact of this simple change is not obvious when we are only comparing fragments of the configuration. Now, this is another example with a very small change, a Helm chart version bump. But this change could result to anything from pod restarts to new deployments being created, or new services or changes in config maps. So we need a solution to pre-render the full diff and make the impact of our change visible and clear before we hit the merge button. For this, we need a solution to pre-render the full plane manifests with our change in place. Now, let's talk about desired state as live state when rendering diffs. Some tools are comparing the desired state in the pull request branch to the live state in the cluster. I think that this is not ideal because the live state in the cluster changes all the time. For example, if we have a Kubernetes controller that runs in the cluster and changes the resources both in the cluster in, and in our pull request, Another issue is, if we have an Argo CD configuration that is reading from Git every three minutes, then the state can be different each time, depending on whether the synchronization has not happened yet, or is in the progress uh, currently, or has just finished. And so the diff can appear differently each time. This means that we are comparing desired state, which is static, to live state, which is dynamic. And uh, I think that the output can be non-deterministic, and I also think it can, that it can sometimes be confusing. This is a problem, especially when we are dealing with infrastructure changes. Let's examine the following scenario. We have an Argo CD application that is out of sync, either because uh, the auto sync was disabled or because the sync just didn't happen yet. And now the deployment in our main branch is not present in the cluster yet. Now let's imagine that we create a pull request that changes the replicas number in this deployment. The diff that we would see can be confusing because the whole deployment would be considered as a whole new resource because it is not in the cluster yet. While our pull request has only changed the number of replicas and it, is, it was not creating a whole new resource. So to summarize, I think that comparing desired state to desired state is more reliable and more deterministic than comparing desired state to live state. And now let's observe some of the existing tools and approaches for previewing diff. The rendered manifest approach is based on the developer working with Helm and Customize well, Argo CD looks at the fully rendered plain manifests in another location in Git. Those manifests are rendered in the CI pipelines. This enables comparing desired state to desired state. 
The pros of this approach are that we have immutable manifests that are applied to the cluster as is without any further changes, and the impact of our change is visible and clear. The cons are that it complexes the CI pipelines. It requires coding this processing logic, and uh, this is a challenge when the number of our environments and our application scales. The custom processing logic is unique to each use case. Also, a change in the manifest does not necessarily indicate a change in the runtime, because maybe there is no live Argo CD application that is looking at this Git repo path at this moment. KubeChex is a Kubernetes deployment with a server function that processes webhooks from GitLab and GitHub. It clones the repository of the Hedge of the pull request, and then it runs various check suites. It then comments the result of each check suite as a separate comment on the pull request, and it talks to the live Argo CD to get the state of the live deployments and to predict the impact of the change on the deployments in production. It compares desired states to live states. The pros of this is that it's done automatically. We do not need any custom logic. And the results are visible on the pull request. The cons are that it requires access to live Argo CD, and this may not always be desir desirable for production systems because of both security and performance reasons. Another challenge is if our application, the relevant application, is out of sync, then it might be challenging to understand the actual diff for an out of sync application. Also, the auto-discovery of relevant apps that would be impacted by our change can become challenging, especially when we're dealing with multi-source applications. Another challenge is, uh, that is introduced is when we are using multiple Argo CD instances. Argo CD diff action is a GitHub action tool. It runs the Argo CD diff command against a live Argo CD, and it compares desired state to live state. This tool isn't actively maintained lately. The incubating Argo CD hydrator tool is based on the rendered manifest pattern integrate into Argo CD, and then Argo CD renders and pushes the plain full manifest to Git. This approach has all the pros of the rendered manifest approach, and it also tackles some of the cons because of the native Argo CD integration in place. Michael Crenshaw and Zach Aller gave a talk about it earlier today. This solution is not out yet. Today, we're going to see another solution that combines the best of both worlds. It uses a live Argo City instance, but, is it, but it is not your live Argo City instance. And without further ado, Doug will now show you the Argo City diff preview tool, which is the main focus of our talk today. Thank you so much, Reggie. <clears throat> yes, my name is Doug, and I work for a Danish company called Double. And Double, it's a dating app that focuses on double dating and meeting people in larger groups. But enough about me. Let's talk about how we can use ephemeral Kubernetes cluster to render our manifest changes directly on our pull requests. So in other words, how can we use a tool like Kind or Minikube to figure out what have changed between two branches, but without accessing your live infrastructure and rendering the whole process locally instead? So the flow I want you to imagine is that some developer opens up a pull request where they make a few changes to a Helm chart or customized template. And uh, this pipeline, uh, or this pull request triggers a pipeline. And inside the pipeline, we start off by installing a local Kubernetes cluster that is only accessible inside the pipeline. Then we install Argo CD on top of it and then apply all our applications. This means we can now extract out the rendered manifests for each domain branch and the pull request branch. And then we can do a git diff and compare the result afterward and highlight it on the pull request. As you can probably see here, uh, don't worry, I'll go into much more detail in a second, but as you can probably see here, uh, we're not uh, interacting or accessing any of your live infrastructure and we can run as many as we want in parallel without worrying about locks or queues or anything like that or webhooks that you may know from uh, similar solutions. But instead of you going home and building this stuff from scratch in bash like I did originally, I created a project for it called Argo CD Diff Preview, which pretty much just encapsulates the logic I explained to you uh, just now. It takes two branches in and then it spits out a markdown describing exactly what have changed on the rendered output. And you can then uh, post that uh, markdown and a comment on GitHub or in a Slack message or whatever you feel like. But instead of me showing you screenshots of how it works, let's just take a look at 
a code example, if I, can you see this one? No. Is it not mirror? This is wonderful. This is the classic example of me just freestyling now. And I will show. Okay. Oh, now I lost it on the other page. Perfect. Let's take a look at this pull request right here. Let's imagine that you are a software developer and someone sent you this pull request. The first thing you see is that someone added something called replica count and set it to five as part of this values object. And this is part of some Helm chart in an application here. And the second change you see is that there's something called full name override that is being set to argocon demo. The problem here is that you have no idea how these changes impact the system. Maybe you have a guess, but Overall, you, you don't see the full picture here, so you don't really know what's going to happen. For example, you don't know if there's something called replica count as part of this Helm chart. Maybe it was just called replicas, and this replica count is maybe not even read, so this change doesn't mean anything. Or the full name override. You can probably guess that you're overriding certain names, but you don't know what you're overriding, and thus you don't know the consequences of this change. So what usually happens is that you look at this and say, hmm, it looks uh, fine, it's correctly formatted, and I hope that this person checked that it's called replica account, and then you approve it and pray to God that things actually work out once it's uh, merged into main. But it doesn't have to be like that. If you're using the Argo City Diff Preview tool in this case, you get a nice comment that looks like this as part of your pull request. You can expand it, and then it will show you exactly what have changed in the rendered output between the two branches. And here we see that there's a service here that got a new name called ArgoCon Demo. Same thing for a service account, also got a new name, ArgoCon demo, same for deployment. And we can see it correctly updated the replica account to five, so that seems to work. And then we have the service account down here also being set to ArgoCon demo to reflect the name change up here. So this way you can validate your changes before you uh, approve or reject the pull request. This example here is with a Helm chart that exists inside the local repository, but it also works with external resources. So let's imagine that you are updating to the newest version of Istio, and you know that if something goes wrong here, you may uh, destroy the whole network, and your boss is going to be very angry with you. In this case, it's very beneficial that you can open up a pull request where you bump the image version, and then you can see the rendered output and verify like manually line for line if this uh, upgrade you want. You probably want it, but, but at least here you can validate it, and you feel more safe when doing these bigger updates on production environments. Let's take a look at how this pipeline, or how this comment is actually created. This example here is, of course, for uh, GitHub, but you could create something very similar in other pipeline tools. It only has five steps. The first step is that we pull down the code from our pull request branch, then we pull down the code from our main branch, then we set up some simple read access credentials so the local Argo City instance has access to reading your repositories, and then we run the tool as part of a Docker container. And then we, at, at the end here, comment uh, the output, uh, or we post the output as a comment on the pull request. In most cases, this is all you need, and you can even just copy-paste this code directly into your repository or from the documentation, and it will automatically detect which repository you're on, which branch you're on, and generate a GitHub token for you to do the authentication. So hopefully you see that it's very easy to get started, and uh, that is one of the great benefits of this tool. And let's go back to the slideshow. This was, oh no. Oh no. Where is the other one? Can you see it? Yes. Great. And this is fine. So let's talk about how this actually works behind the scene. So when the tool starts up, we create a cluster and we install Argo CD on it. And the next step is that we go in and find all your applications inside the repository. But before we apply these applications to the, uh, to the 
to the local cluster, we need to do a few modifications. And the first thing is that we take the syncing policy and then we delete it. Because we don't want to run any of your workload inside the local cluster, we only want to do the rendering process. And the next step is that we take the destination and we set it to in cluster. And this is just to ensure that if your company manages like a full fleet of remote clusters, we need to make sure that we redirect all those applications to the local cluster because otherwise this will naturally fail and uh, because we don't have access to those clusters. And then at the end here, we have the target revision, which we set to either the main branch or the pull request branch. And this is essentially how we're rendering two different versions of all applications that we can then compare the result of afterwards. And when this is done, we apply them to the cluster and wait for Argo CD to do its thing. After a little while, Argo CD puts them into this state called out of sync, which you have definitely seen in the UI before. And it just means that it has rendered the, uh, the applications and we can extract them out using the command you see here on the screen. And this is essentially how the tool works. The Argo CD installation that is done by this tool is using the Helm chart for um, Argo CD, the community-driven one. And this means you can customize the installation however you want. So if your company uses specific build options or different kind of plugins, it still works with this kind of tool as long as you just install it through a values file for this Helm chart. It shouldn't be that difficult to get working. Now let's talk about desired state and live state, which Reggie talked about 10 minutes ago now. Um, but this time in the context of using ephemeral Kubernetes clusters. And here you have probably already guessed it, but we're only looking at desired state because we only have access to desired state. We don't know about the live state, so we don't have these issues related to out of sync applications and all these other things that can happen when you're talking to a live uh, cluster. So that is great. And another small benefit that comes with that is that even if your main production cluster, whatever, has uh, issues with connectivity or starvation and resources, this still works because we don't have any dependencies to the live cluster. But this is just a small benefit. Hopefully, this has not become relevant for you. Another benefit I want to highlight is that we get these fast feedback loop because, as general, as we know, in the software industry, we prefer to find issues early on and hopefully before we merge our changes. Because what we hate to see is some developer that opens up a pull request where they make a few changes, they finally get it approved, and the first thing that happens once it's merged is that now there's an error in the Argo CD UI, and now the configuration is broken on the production environment, and everyone is sad. Now the developer clicks the error message and see it's a comparison error where it can't find certain file, usually just because there's some typo somewhere that they need to go fix. So they need to go back into the code, create a new pull request, get it approved, finally get it merged, and now we are back and it's green. But we could have avoided this whole problem because if we're using the ephemeral Kubernetes cluster, we're essentially running like a fully fledged version of Argo CD inside as a rendering process. So this problem would, for example, have been caught early on, meaning we, this, the broken configuration would never have been merged into the main branch. And specifically for using the Argo CD diff preview in this case, uh, this would be, have been highlighted as part of uh, the output in the pipeline. So you could see exactly the same Argo CD error, but now in the pipeline beforehand, so you would never have merged the pull request. But it leads me to the next topic, which is limitations. And that's because, yes, we can de detect a lot of issues early on in the process, but there, we cannot detect all of them. And that's because some issues only happen at runtime or at resource creation time. And this can give you a false sense of security. And some examples of that would be if you're trying to create an application that has a deployment that runs a container as root, but you also specified it to not be allowed to run as root. Well, in this case, this will only be detected once uh, Kubernetes tries to schedule this part and will say, I can't do that. But this would never have been detected as part of the rendering process because we're not running the containers and thus that is a limitation of this kind of tool. Um, so keep that in mind. Another example would be that if you're making changes to some custom resources as part of a Helm chart, customize, you name it. The output you're seeing in the rendered output is, uh, is still correct and uh, is valid and everything, but the moment you maybe deploy it to uh, some destination cluster, if that cluster doesn't have your custom resource definition installed, well, it will fail. And again, we cannot detect that because we do not have that uh, information available to us at this point. So keep this in mind. It can give us a false sense of security. There are some issues that we cannot catch, and this will give you this sync failed that you have probably seen before in the Argo CD UI. Another limitation is speed, because spinning up a local Kubernetes cluster and installing Argo CD on it, every single run is a slow process. That takes around 70 seconds, meaning that the full pipeline run where you need to pull down the code base twice, you need to pull the Docker image to run the tool if it's not cached and then run it, that took a bit over two minutes, at least depending on how many applications you have. A pro tip is to really try to reduce the number of applications you render each time. Um, but if you have any idea how this can be sped up in any way, please come talk to me. I would love to hear it because I think this is one of the bigger limitations. Or 
either here at the uh, KubeCon or on an open, uh, open issue on the GitHub. Just uh, I would love to discuss it there, how, what, how, what we can do to improve this kind of uh, tool. And then I was told that it's a good idea to mention adoption here because I am very happy that a, lo a few companies in this case are actually using this kind of tool or uh, some variation of it in production right now with great success, which I'm very happy about, and other companies have currently reached out and we're, uh, they're currently testing it out, but they were not ready to be highlighted on the screen because they're not officially using it yet. But so far, mainly just positive feedback, so we're very happy about that. Let's summarize the main points of this talk. What did we actually learn? We learned that the main benefits of using ephemeral Kubernetes clusters compared to alternative solution is that it runs in complete isolation. This is great for security and it means we can run as many as we want in parallel without worrying about locks, queues, webhooks, anything like that. And it also means that we are only looking at desired state because we only look at Git and this is great because we don't have these issues with out of sync applications or similar that you may have seen in other tools. And it also means that we can even run this tool locally before opening up a pull request if you really want to. I do that all the time, and it, uh, of course it requires that you have the, local cred the credentials locally for this to work, but at least that's also a nice benefit. The main limitation is that it's slow to spin up a local Kubernetes cluster and install Argo CD on it. That is kind of just uh, the name of the game here. It's hard to avoid using this approach. And we can have a false sense of security because we cannot detect all issues, even though we of course would love to. The main benefits of using specifically Argo CD uh, preview as an implementation of this method is that it's easy to set up. Hopefully you saw that as part of the demo and it's not opinionated in the way you use it. All it does is compare branches. You can maybe fit it into whatever workflow you're using. The main limitation is that it doesn't necessarily uh, work very well when you have like a very spread out configuration of Argo CD and manifest across many different repositories. But it, it does work, but it's kind of difficult to configure. It's something I'm actually working on. So hopefully this will be uh, fixed over time. Thank you so much for your time. Um, if you have any questions for us, please just ask afterwards. And feel free to reach out to us on Slack, LinkedIn, wherever you can find us. I hope you found this interesting. I think we have a few minutes for questions if you want to take them live. Oh, no. <laughs> Anybody scared. questions? One over here. Two over here. Does the diff that gets posted to the PR, does that use the same redaction capabilities that is in the Argo web UI? Like if I'm hydrating secrets from the Argo Vault plugin, are they redacted in the PR as well? Can you repeat the first part of the question? I didn't hear it. Uh, so in the Argo uh, UI, it redacts values and secrets. Uh -huh. So if I'm hydrating secrets from, for example, the Argo Vault plugin, is that also redacted in the diff that gets posted to the PR? No. That is not something that I've considered. Okay. But something that can be improved on, <laughs> for sure. Okay. And then you were asking about uh, speeding things up. Have you looked at using V cluster to spin up the temporary clusters? Oh, yes. Uh, I've tried many different approaches to maybe spin up temporarily uh, clusters, spinning up temporary uh, uh, namespaces, and so on. But uh, to me, it was very difficult to actually get the V clusters to work properly. And it also, hmm. It's, a more, it's much more difficult to bundle for people to use. And what I wanted to achieve with this was something people who actually get started with right now. Because I think some of the limitations of other tools that exist right now is that they are actually not super easy to set up and maybe you'll give up. So this was just a more complicated. Okay, thank you. No worries. Thanks, I think we have one more question. Time for one more question. Yeah, I'm gonna take another shot at helping you speed this up. Uh, do you know ENV test? ENV test? Yeah, uh, it's maintained by the uh, controller runtime SIG. It only starts up at CD in an API server, no kubelet, no runtime. So if you run just Argo CD, the application controller, starts up in about five seconds. So also one last question, does this support the app of apps pattern? Yes, it does. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. One more question. One more question. Application sets, do you support them? Yes. Awesome, thanks again, Regina and Dag, give it up. Thank you so much.